Welcome to our channel. In this video we will go over key features provided by Apache Kafka and see how it compares with traditional message queue systems. Let's start with the most basic function, sending messages from one service to another. Traditional message queue systems provide a mechanism for asynchronous service-to-service -service communication. To send a message, a component called a producer adds a message to the queue. The message is then stored in the queue until another component called a customer retrieves the message. Kafka also supports this function using slightly different terminology and implementation. To send a message, a producer adds a message to a topic. After that the message is stored in the topic and can be read and processed by a consumer. Note, however, that unlike message queue, Kafka does not immediately remove a processed message from a topic. Now, let's compare broadcasting capabilities. Traditional message queue allows many producers and consumers to use the same queue. However, each message that is added to a queue can be processed only once, by a single consumer. Let's look at an example. There is one producer and three consumers that work with the same queue. The producer sends two messages one after another and each message is received only by one of the consumers. Producers and consumers have no control over which consumer each of the messages will be delivered. Just like a message queue, Kafka allows multiple producers and consumers to use the same topic. But in Kafka every message that is added to a topic is read and processed by every consumer group that is subscribed to a topic. This allows a producer to send every message to multiple services. Here is an example. There is one producer and three consumer groups that work with the same topic. The producer sends two messages one after another. Every consumer group receives every message. Now, let's compare message ordering. Traditional message queue allows multiple consumers to retrieve messages from a queue. However, in this case there is no guarantee that messages will be processed in the same order in which they were added into a queue. Here is an example. There is one producer and two consumers that work with the same queue. The producer sends three messages one after another. Consumer number one retrieves the first message and processes it. Consumer number two retrieves the second message and starts processing it. Consumer number one retrieves the third message and processes it. At this point consumer number two fails to process the second message and the second message is processed by consumer number one. As a result the messages are processed not in the same order in which they were added into the queue. Kafka provides stronger ordering guarantees. A consumer always reads messages from a topic partition in the same order as they were added. Here is an example. There is one producer and two consumers that work with the same topic. The queue consists of two partitions. Each consumer reads messages only from one partition. The producer sends first and third messages to the first partition. Second and fourth messages are sent to the second partition. Each consumer receives messages in order. Even if a consumer fails to process a message and restarts, Kafka guarantees that for each partition messages will be read in the same order as they were added. Now, let's look at message replaying capabilities. Traditional message queue does not allow replay messages. Once a message is retrieved from a queue, it is removed and no consumer will be able to retrieve it again. Kafka does not remove messages as soon as they are read. 
For each consumer Kafka keeps track of the consumer's position in a topic. This allows a consumer to deliberately rewind back to an old offset and reread and reprocess messages. Here is an example. The consumer retrieves messages from a topic. Later, the consumer resets its position in the topic and retrieves previously retrieved messages again. Now, let's compare limits on number of consumers. Traditional message queue does not limit the number of consumers that read data from a queue. Consumers can be added and removed as needed. In this example, there are three consumers that are simultaneously processing messages from a queue. In Kafka, on the other hand, the maximum number of consumers for a topic is limited by the number of partitions that this topic has. Consumers can be added and removed as needed. But as soon as the number of consumers reaches the number of partitions, additional consumers will not be assigned to a partition and will not be able to read any messages. In this example, the second consumer is available to process messages from a topic, but since the topic has only two partitions that are already assigned to consumers, the second consumer is not receiving messages from the topic. After looking at these core features of Apache Kafka and message queues, it should be obvious that each technology has its own advantages and drawbacks. As always, remember to use the right tool for the job or a problem that needs to be solved. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it and found it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe. Keep your code simple. Until next time.